who wants to attack. Swinging it round. This must be a chance. It is. Something else that hasn't changed is that many of our more exciting players are destined to play in the English league. And it does get through. Back to Benny with a shot. It's there. 2 1. Rocklin's there, so is Dixon, Speedy, yes, the equaliser in the 89th minute. Stevens, looking for Sharp, and he got behind Lawrence and there did Sharp, what a fantastic goal, an unbelievable finish from Graham Sharp. When a Scottish footballer's ability results in his moving to the richer English league, the transition can lead to some confusion of lifestyle, as with Charlie Nicholas. The cultural differences are sometimes felt on the field as well as off it. I think every team in Scotland generally wants to attack. I mean, we are known to be, as you say, turn a ball players, all skillful players, like, want to attack. And uh, <clears throat> in England, you don't get a lot of them. You get very average players that make a lot of money here. And a lot of Scottish players would go, oh, ain't yeah, very good, you know. But uh, that's the way the game is in England. A lot of very average players getting paid high salaries and just being professional, really. And they had a lot of success earlier, but Nicholas takes it and scores! <laughs> minute from half-time, and Charlie Nicholas... I think if you look at a lot of the Scottish players, more often the most interesting to watch. Um, Every team you look at, I mean, the people, if you're talking about, oh, such and such a good player, he's a good player, and then the Scottish player comes in the conversation, and the, the, the tempo changes, like uh, you've got in Strachan's and that, you know. I mean, Frank McAvenny, he's doing really well in England. Um, there's so many. Nicholas, I mean, he's got more interest than so many other people that come down here. Kenny, I mean, the list is endless, you know. Possibly they are the more, um, they quite often seem to be the more individuals are skillfully talented too. Pat Nevin, like so many Scottish players who have played in England, tends to see football as an expression of his Scottishness. Beautifully set up though by Pat Nevin, that was the classic Scottish dribble and pullback. It's important for people not to let me forget, you know. <laughs> They're so quick yeah, to remind you, I think. Oh, I'm pretty good Scottish anyway, and I don't really want to forget it. And it's an attitude that possibly a lot of Scottish players have come down here. Uh, I'd say that about an awful lot of Scottish players, as a matter of fact, they come down and they, they definitely feel as if they've got something to prove to a whole country. Um, and they, they've also got something to prove to people back home that uh, they're doing Dixon, quite well. That whatever it is, may they be noticed, recognised for um, international duties, or will they just be recognised by the friends that they've actually done something? Well, there is a lot of that down here, and I think it's, I don't know, it's an important thing to a lot of Scots away from home. Over McCarthy's head this time. Nevin with Wilson. He's got round him. Will he try one from here? What a superb goal by Nevin. The importance of football to Scots still leads to a fierce commitment. But is the commitment too extreme? Football takes itself too seriously at times. Chairmen take themselves too seriously. All these restrictions and referees and players really, to some extent, a joke. Football is about balance and perspective and humour and heroes and villains. There's a lot more serious things in life. And in fact, football really should be about escapism. And anyone who thinks that football is any more than just basic, good entertainment really is, is I think, getting an inflated view of their own importance and their industry. An inflated view of its own importance is perhaps an accurate diagnosis of the condition of Scottish football for a long time past. But will the new financial realism be enough to effect a cure? It might solve the money problems, but what about the psychological dependency of so many Scots for so long a time? What would the Scots be without their exaggerated love of football? Um, crackpots, I'm tempted to say, but we're crackpots anyway. English. What would Scotland be like without football? I think uh, we might get a bit more work done but uh, I think we'd have probably have an even higher level of alcoholism. 
a lost nation. Um, the game is uh, national heritage. It is very, very important. It is a big part of life in that country. If you say there's, there's no football, the country would die. More than probably most places, most countries, most, uh, they are so soccer-minded, football-minded, I think it would be a terrible tragedy if, it, if, it, if there wasn't any there. Oh, I don't think it would be in existence at all. It's, it's, to them, it's a lovely incurable disease, football. Certainly, as a nation, Scotland could be said to suffer from dependency on the football match. No matter how the club game is restructured, Scotland would presumably require changes that extend beyond the football field before it stopped asking the Scottish team to justify its national identity. Until that time, every goal looks like being received as if it were news of another Bannockburn. Seemingly won by McLeish. McLeish with a layoff to Paul McStay. And a great goal from McStay! The football especially has a special place in all our hearts. If one is a Scot, as I said to you before, we believe that Saturdays were made for football. There's only one thing in Scotland in my life, and that's football. That's it. Only one thing in my life, football. I mean, what they would do without their football, I, I just don't know, you know. I mean, I don't think they could ever take to cricket <laughs> like they do in England. The Scottish passion for football is admirable. But the intensity of hope the national team engenders sometimes seems out of proportion to the facts. The smaller teams in the country may be forced to realise their limitations, but the Scotland team is usually encouraged to ignore its own. Any victory, especially against England, has an effect dramatic enough to suggest the nation has been swallowing amphetamines. It can make you wonder what kind of feeling the experience of a Scottish victory counteracts. Oh, God, what would they take up, you know? I certainly hope they wouldn't take out religious bigotry as a full-time kind of pastime, you know. <laughs> Let's hope that's not what football's replacing just now, although sometimes you feel like this. Um, I don't know, the passions of so many men, where would they go? Maybe it would be good. Maybe it would be people there, passions of people that were... Uh, they could maybe strive to do something more individually. But I certainly hope not, because I think it's a great thing for Scotland. I think it's an important thing for the Scottish nation as uh, the interest in the World Cup has shown. Hope to God we get through. There's a touchdown, Michael Benny. He's done it. It's there, the second one. Brilliant. Scotland are through to the World Cup finals for the fourth time in a row. That is in itself a remarkable achievement. Any withdrawal symptoms can be worried about afterwards. For the moment, it's the high.